good evening can you hear me good so we'll start in couple of minutes uh, this is 418 now How was your first day? Uh, did you have fun? All right. Uh, just wait for a minute or two. <clears throat> All right, so let's begin. Okay. Right, so before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Sushil Hanwate. I am from Pune, India. And uh, I've been working in Drupal for past 14 years as a backend developer. Currently working in Chappers. Uh, the people at Chappers were kind enough to uh, sponsor my trip here. And uh, because of them, I could travel here and present here. So I wanted to uh, thank them before I start the session. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, my Drupal username is Sushil with a Y. And uh, that why is not in my actual name. So this is uh, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm working as a Drupal consultant right now. So enough enough about me. I'll uh, before we actually start. Uh, I wanted to know how many of you have worked on. Uh, oh sorry, uh, how many of you worked on config split module? Anybody has? Config split module, configuration split, config ignore. All right, Ashab. Hey, hey. <laughs> so, uh, they, so we are not talk, going to talk mainly about that today. So, so what are we going to talk about? I'll just, I'll just give you uh, own, an overview of today's agenda. So we will. Touch, uh, you know, touch base with the ba the introduction of traditional way. So the uh, way we handle Drupal con configuration in in a normal or usual site. So we'll talk about its uh, pros, how <coughs> uh, how uh, beneficial. I mean, why we we usually use uh, the traditional way in normal sites, and then uh, we'll talk about the workflow, how we handle it, and then we'll discuss the limitations of the traditional way. And that will basically uh, will be our segue into why we <coughs> we are we are going to use modular way. So we'll talk about what is my modular way and why or when we use the modular way. And then how to so th there are different so in the the way we handle update updating and overriding configurations in the traditional way is not. Uh, you know, not not the way we do it in the modular configurations. So we'll talk about you know doing those things and also handling the dependencies in the config in the modular configurations. So <coughs> if uh, you know, I'm assuming that uh, 
everybody knows basics about the configure you know the, the usual configuration uh, handling so if you have any questions please ask again and I'll all right uh, so the drupal database is basically consists of two parts i mean two it has two parts one is content and uh, the other one is configurations so <clears throat> the content is usually nodes and the users comments taxonomy terms and uh, i mean I, I think we all know about these things so uh, i be, be this being a you know expert session so the second part is so the second part is configurations which is uh, which has vocabularies content types views and block configurations etc so in usual way or in the traditional way we export all the things inside uh, a single directory which is uh, usually inside the uh, sites default configuration so by default it drupal exports all the configurations into sites default files and then uh, config underscore config hash slash sync directory so this config hash is basically a uh, unique uh, random randomly generated number which uh, which is generated differently for each site and we could uh, basically change this directory to some somewhere uh, which I mean, which is not very public so this this site default file directory is public and anybody can access that so if we don't want that we can just change the directory's path from setting.php using the setting config underscore sync underscore directory and uh, we usually uh, people do it i mean people change it to uh, the the root directory's parent directory i mean uh, we'll we create a config directory inside that and then uh, the sync directory is always created by the drupal uh, drupal when we export the configurations so this is the usual way we uh, <coughs> first we i mean uh, in the traditional way we use uh, either drush commands or the user interface to export the configurations and uh, uh, the, the drush commands are drush config hyphen export and to import the 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 configuration yamls or yaml files uh, we use dash config import uh, dash command so if we want to separate or <coughs> that <coughs> sorry so there's a, there is a way uh, we could separate these configurations in for uh, different uh, different instances let's say they we are using uh, certain configurations only on development and uh, so, so some other configurations only on production we can we can separate the, those configurations use into different directories or different folders using conflict split uh, which is uh, i mean we can do that uh, do this uh, using conflict split which which uh, i mean uh, we could be uh, sorry so yeah so that that is why we use conflict split to split the configurations for different uh, different environments and uh, we can also use config ignore so let's say we want to uh, for example we want to uh, we we are using a development uh, devil module uh, on local and we don't want that those that, that the devil modules configurations to be uh, exported onto onto the production environment then we'll will uh, you know create two splits one for production one for uh, development and we'll export all the devil related configurations into the devil directory and uh, for production let's say we, we are using uh, you know the different cache configurations for for production so, so usually production uh, is heavy on cache and we uh, don't want that to to happen on the development uh, otherwise development will be slower so uh, we, we could yeah we could split do these configurations into, into using conflict split module and uh, let's say we are, we want to allow some configurations of the of the production side to be edited by side side builders and uh, not to be overwritten by the development uh, to to be overwritten by the configuration in the config sync directly we can use config ignore so what config ignore does is it allows us to uh, specify the configurations that we don't do not want overwritten by the the yaml files in the in the code base 
so this this, this was uh, this was about you know how we do it how we do it traditional way so the, the benefit of uh, the plus points of this particular approach is are uh, basically the reason why it is traditional is it's simple to handle or simple to you know uh, use so uh, so it, it's easy to easy for the developers to export the configuration to single directory and you know put that put those in the, into the code base and uh, deploy them uh, in the next environment the second thing is uh, everything every configuration in this approach are are uh, handled by developers themselves so we there, there is very less control to the actual content editors or you know site builders uh, so they cannot actually make any configuration related changes and uh, you know keep them permanent so even if they may, even if someone makes the configuration change on the production uh, they until next deployment they will have to talk to a developer uh, to uh, you know make them permanent so developer will have to export all the changes and put it into the code base again and then deploy it and then uh, otherwise all the changes will uh, done by you know the site builders on production site will be you know, overridden by overridden by the changes in the code base. So, and the, then the last and the last benefit of this or a plus point of this this particular um, approach is we uh, don't have to manage all the dependencies. So, I'll, I, you'll know why I'm putting this point uh, here because uh, I, in the later part of the in the modular part of the session. But uh, because all these configurations are put, exported in the single directory, we don't have to worry about which configuration is dependent on which uh, configuration. So uh, th that will be handled uh, automatically when we export all the configurations. Um, so why we, what are the limitations of this approach? So uh, Drupal is a CMS which, uh, which is very flexible and if we are not giving you know the control to site builders to change uh, change the you know con some of the configurations then then i think that, that that's uh, you know limitations because because uh, if you are not using so many fetch features that, uh, that 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 are configurable then uh, yeah i mean it, it we, are, we have to basically wait for the whole deployment process to change certain thing, things uh, or or uh, you know and they will get lost at, at at the next deployment. And uh, there is also one uh, one thing about using the the, the CEX and this CIM, so uh, exporting all the configurations in, into one directory. Well, so if we are we have created certain configurations on the production, so let's say we have created a view on production website and uh, that view is not inside the yaml yaml files in uh, in the in the config sync directory when we, once the configurations are imported whatever is not inside the the exported yaml files will get deleted automatically so that is uh, i think a very a very big uh, uh, you know very big minus point of this <coughs> so yeah, um, and there's one more thing. Uh, we if we want to use same set of configurations on on the multiple websites, we cannot do that. Do this because when we export the configurations, each configuration has. Uh, I mean, each Drupal website, if you know, has their own UUID. Uh, it's a random number generated for each website, and we can only use. Uh, we can only import all the configurations on the same set of or same copy of sorry copy of the same website because uh, you know every configuration has uh, this unique uid in them uh, from which the site the configuration was uh, created uh, any questions so far am, am i making any sense all right uh, so why modular so why uh, i was I, I i'm talking about modular configurations and what is my modular configuration so i was working on a project couple of years ago 
which uh, was different uh, than you know the, the general sites the sites i was used to work on now in two two ways so first thing was uh, the first difference was it was using site uh, site studio module uh, site studio it's a product of acquia anybody familiar with site studio or cohesion it was called earlier okay uh, i i see some people nodding but uh, i'll just just uh, provide brief introduction about that so what the site studio does is it's a very rich of fancy page builder anybody familiar familiar with page manager or panels or uh, layout builder okay so <coughs> so it is uh, something like that so it provides content editors not the site builders the content editors to change the content layout and uh, basic uh, elements of front end so we, you can change the background or you know add a column to the content itself so all you have to do is uh, uh, add a can layout canvas field so it, there's a field called canvas and it handles all the you know complex st structure of the content so we don't don't even have to create a field uh, sometimes so it it depends on how you want to run it but what it what it does is uh, it makes uh, makes the node structure di uh, different so when content uh, so earlier we uh, the content editors uh, had only access to content and now what this does is you know uh, it puts configurations inside content so uh, we have to manage all the uh, you know uh, we have to manage all the configurations on node level and that was kind of tricky but we could have uh, you know worked around this using config ignore module so we could have just uh, let content address uh, content address edit the content and then th those particular configurations will be ignored for developers but uh, this is this is not the only concern that we had uh, this particular project was uh, you know we were using the code this code base for many websites so hundreds of websites were using the same code base so it was like a product and uh, we were uh, you know each we were uh, deploying the same code base on different brands so each brand had their own theme and uh, uh, their own set of configuration so everybody every brand had different modules installed so there were some common modules in, uh, be between them or among them but uh, not all were the same so each site was unique so we had to make sure that uh, no uh, one no specific change was deployed by mistake by on other you know on other brand uh, in the deployment process so each deployment was to be done uh, you know modular in in modular way so we we couldn't just export everything and put it in one directory and uh, you know use conflict split as well because conflict split only is uh, applicable when the uid is you know same for the configuration and the site so that, that that's why we you know we came up with not came up with and it, it is already there it's it's in uh, drupal course uh, you know we we generally have these conf modular configurations in uh, uh, many config contributed and core modules so <coughs> this is why we started using the modular con configurations uh, any questions so far uh, okay i'll take that as a no uh, okay so how do we uh, handle this how how do we use modular way so what uh, what i mean by modular way is putting your contrib uh, your configuration yaml files inside your modules config/install directory when you do that you have to just you have to make sure you don't uh, you remove the uuid from the configuration yaml files otherwise you know it it will be again the same thing so when you do that when uh, after installing this module all the configuration files in the this install directory will be automatically installed on your website so what it uh, so why we are, you, you are doing this so in the in the traditional or usual way we the configurations are imported as soon as we use the cim so, or uh, you know we import the configurations manually and uh, what it does is it deletes all the configurations automatically 
so if the configuration in the yam you know in the directory is not not there uh, on the, sorry if the data configurations in the database is not there in the yaml files the configuration will be deleted on from the database itself but in this way the, uh, whatever yaml files are there it will be it will just get imported it won't delete anything so so this is this is what is this is what uh, uh, when i say modular way this is what it is all right so let's uh, take an example here let's say we are developing a installation profile an installation profile or distribution who doesn't know uh, what an installation profile is okay so installation profile is uh, you know when you install drupal so when you install drupal you see you know standard basic and uh, you know umami uh, so those are basically profiles so basic those profile defined uh, which module you want to install or which which set of modules or which set of configuration you want to install when you install the site first time so let's say we are creating uh, such uh, such installation profile for uh, drupal camps or drupal events or conferences so there is already uh, if you don't know uh, there is always already a uh, contributed module event platform which helps you know create new new the drupal conferences website so if you uh, want you can check that check that out it's a very good example of this so yeah so let's say we are creating two websites and from using our uh, you know new uh, installation profile so what and we have uh, four modules inside inside that profile uh, camp sponsors camp speakers and camp ads and camp tickets uh, so the names are obvious uh, the sponsors is relate uh, is you know has all the configurations related to sponsors speakers for speakers and ads for advertisement and tickets for buying you know selling tickets for the event so let's say dev days event uh, it's sell using drupal for selling the tickets but florida camp is not doing that so uh, but florida camp has is displaying ads for this prop, you know for the uh, ads provided by the sponsors so they are handling ads on their website but uh, the common things you know camp sponsors and speakers they uh, they are common between these two websites so this is the example of uh, where we could we could use uh, you know the modular uh, approach any questions okay so i have been talking about you know installation installing configurations in and uh, we've learned that uh, you know this this configurations are only affect you know a, only affect the site when you install the module you know install a new module uh, so how do we update the the site with with uh, with new configuration so if we want to update the same configuration that we installed with one module how do we do that so uh, we use update helper module and uh, update helper module is uh, you know it it just provides a way to create update directly in your your module and uh, we can export all the th all the new configurations using this dash command over over here uh, so but um, so I'll, I'll just explain what the what is the uh, overflow sorry oh, uh, what is the workflow for for doing this is so uh, once you so let's say we, we you've created a you've created a module and uh, it has some configurations like uh, let's say it, it has a node inside it uh, node type inside it and uh, you you want to add one more one more field in, field to the existing content type so this can uh, you know the, uh, let's say that the mm, let's say it's an article okay and uh, yeah, so you what you, what you'll do is you uh, yeah, sorry <laughs> let me collect my thoughts so what you'll do is uh, you'll uh, export all the configurations sorry you'll uh, you know install this module on your de development website and then make you make uh, changes or add a, add the field to your to your inside your development uh, instance and you'll run this command 
and what this will do is it will create a yaml file inside your modules update directory and it will also create a, an update hook for you, for you so it will it will just take two arguments first which module do you want to create updates for and uh, what what would be the uh, the number for the uh, update hook so it looks the yaml file looks uh, will look something like this so it and uh, i'll just explain what how this file uh, you know what what are the components of this file uh, so first uh, you see is uh, global actions so if you want to install a module or import some configurations the, if there are new uh, the totally new configurations for uh, inside your module then you could use import configs uh, uh, parameter to import uh, you know to specify which configurations do you want to import from the install directory and uh, if you want to install new modules if uh, once the this update is executed so sometimes you want to install new modules on update hooks uh, so th th this is why, why this is what this install modules is for and if you notice this uh, this global action is not related to specific part of the of a single configuration so we are either importing the whole config whole con new field or configuration or uh, we are installing the module so it's, it's not uh, config level it's global level it, it was kind of obvious uh, mm, yeah so the second second part of the file is uh, if you notice it is a form display setting for article page and uh, we are changing sorry, we are changing the preview style of uh, a teaser image so when whenever we edit uh, an image field there is there is a t you know there is a preview image and we want to change its uh, image style from thumbnail to large so the expected uh, sorry the <coughs> the main components in this particular section is expected config we can uh, put an empty array in this section if we want to import the section import the new configurations anyways uh, so that we just check the, the, uh, the while we import there won't be uh, any checks to see if what are what is the existing configuration so basically this is a conditional uh, import so if we want to check uh, the so in this particular uh, scenario what what it does is if it, it only changes the configurations if existing image style is thumbnail otherwise it will it will keep it uh, what what it is um, yeah so and uh, the second section is update actions so update action uh, could be change delete or uh, add so we could add new configuration or uh, delete this the existing configurations based on the you know the, the condition above or uh, change it like we are doing with this right now all right so this is uh, what the add and delete looks like <coughs> so anybody know about uh, you know enforced dependencies anybody works worked on it okay i'll explain this later uh, the enforced dependencies is something uh, we'll uh, talk about later all right uh, so overriding the configurations so um, what is the difference between overriding and updating configurations? Um, I mean, uh, there is a lot of difference. All right. So uh, when we <coughs> sometimes we want to override the configurations which are that defined by some other modules, so we we cannot actually change. So the, the, so the the other module meaning the con contributed module. If we are uh, some other module is defining the conf uh, configurations and if you want to override it when we, we are installing a new module then we have to use this okay so all we can do is uh, you know enable the config config rewrite module and uh, we can we can uh, you know put all the permissions that we want to override 
so we, you don't have to export or you don't have to pull put the whole configuration yaml file for this uh, you can just put the elements you want to override and if uh, if you find that it's not working properly you could uh, just uh, use this replace uh, replace parameter and make sure uh, that uh, you know you, you mention which particular part you want to override so so this this will uh, this is this works better when uh, you know you, uh, you you use replace so if you want to re uh, for this uh, for the in this example if you, uh, you want to replace the permissions part uh, you can uh, you know this we, we are doing uh, we are just rewriting the permissions where which has changed your own username here all right <clears throat> so managing dependencies in this uh, in the previous or the usual way or traditional way we don't have to manage dependencies uh, unless we are splitting them so but here i think uh, this is the most trickiest part of uh, having the you know using the modular approach because sometimes uh, this if we have a lot of custom modules and if we are you know they are they are interlinked then it, it, it sometimes it becomes impossible to just disable a module because it, it has uh, you, you know one module is dependent on other and it creates sometimes a loop so we have to uh, you know look out for that um, so the enforced dependencies i think uh, so in the previous uh, slides we talk about enforced de dependency what it does is uh, when you put the enforced dependency inside a con inside a configuration yaml file uh, it will uh, it will make sure that the, the, your configurations so so this is this is uh, this is an example here uh, this is a configuration file defined in camp blocks so we are just putting the enforced dependency on the on the configuration uh, of the same uh, so sorry we are putting the enforced dependent dependency of the same module in its configuration file so the configuration files inside that module what it does is uh, it makes sure that the, the configurations defined by this module are deleted when uh, when you un uninstall the module so whenever you install the module it, the configuration will be uh, imported and when you disable or uninstall the module it will make sure that duple will make sure that th th your configurations are deleted and the, the, you know th this particular uh, configurations which has the info de dependency others won't okay so what are the pros of uh, what are the benefits of using a modular way smoother deployment so uh, in the traditional i mean uh, when i was talking about pros of traditional way i said it was simpler uh, simpler to use but i'm saying that uh, the modular way has smoother d deployments what what i mean by that is uh, when we deploy in traditional way as a developer we have to make sure that uh, all the configurations from productions have been considered when you know when we export the changes so we have to uh, double check that we are not overriding or deleting any changes on the production when we uh, when we deploy so uh, that we don't have to do it here because uh, in this approach we are just uh, so unlike the the traditional configuration management what we are not importing all the configurations we are just importing the certain bits of in a you know selected environment so this is very uh, intentional way of importing configurations so uh, usually the configurations will not be affected unless we want them to be um yeah so as i said uh, this this approach uh, we <coughs> the change, configuration changes are not affected unless you know they are manually changed or you know we, we are changing them from update hooks or install uh, you know when the or when we are installing a new module 
so this this gives uh, site builders or content editors full control to change a full you know access to change the existing con configurations so they don't have to worry about their co their uh, configurations made on the production side being overridden by you know uh, the the co the configurations in the code base so and uh, it, <coughs> the, there are ways uh, the developers can you know uh, predict that these are the configurations might have been you know might have been these configurations might have, might be different on the production and if we can put conditional checks while you know exporting or creating or updating the configurations so we we can see that uh, whatever configurations on, uh, are there on the production we can uh, we can you know uh, we can predict or we can uh, plan for uh, certain conditions and uh, make the deployments in, in such a way. Okay. <clears throat> so um, there are also some limitations, of, a lot of limitations of uh, this approach. Because, I mean, this is not a better way of doing things. This is uh, the, the modular way is basically uh, when uh, this modular way is basically you uh, you use this way uh, when certain conditions are there so when when the when you're applying the configurations on multiple sites sites at, at a time when when you do cannot ex export all this uh, con configurations uh, using you know the just export config export so the the, the limitations or the, the minus point of this uh, this way is we are doing we are allowing con site builders or you know site managers to make the configuration changes directly on production and that is not recommended uh, so that it it is <coughs> so it this is the tricky uh, decision to make but uh, if you want to give control to your uh, customers and your customers are the ones who are handling your your production websites then uh, only then you you know this is this is basically a useful approach and uh, there's too much work managing this project or maintaining uh, the the dependencies and the, the maintaining the uh, modules because you have to uh, always worry about you know which module we have to put your configuration inside so if you export any co any configurations in traditional way you just have to think about uh, you know whether or not this will be ignored on production whether or not we want to give the control of this particular modules configuration to uh, site builders or you know the the customers but in this approach you have to think about which module is you know could be related to this and which module might be overriding this change so and sometimes that is why the dependency management becomes you know uh, a chaos so there is too much work uh, while you know maintaining or developing uh, pro projects like this so dependencies are tricky i was uh, so we s have spent like continuously 3 to 4 days uh, removing just a module we wanted to disable a module and we didn't know how to do that because there were lots of modules involved and we didn't want to disable and lose the data so yeah, the other dependencies are extremely tricky if you don't handle it uh, when you are creating the new modules uh, so these are few tips i i mean these are not uh, i mean these are very simple tips and uh, i think they're still very useful so when you whenever you deploy a change or whenever you make a change uh, it's always a good idea to double check the changes on someone else's machine with staging or on staging database uh, because sometimes it works on your machine but it doesn't on the staging or testing environment and uh, that happens more than you can expect so yeah always test your changes uh, at least couple of times on a couple of different uh, the databases and uh, use and for dependencies when necessary so that 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 is uh, 
if you forget to delete a configuration uh, that you thought you have deleted, then it becomes uh, you know a problem sometimes. So yeah, make make sure you uh, delete the infos, use the infos dependencies so that your configurations will automatically be deleted after you disable the module. And uh, check for dependencies loops when you are installing a new module, not uh, when you are updating. I mean, when I mean every time you do do a change so that you don't have to uh, be sorry later. All right, uh, so any questions so far? I <laughs> thank you. Yes, please. I think this is the mic. I, I am not good at throwing. Could someone pass it? <laughs> hi. Yeah, hi. please correct me if I'm getting this wrong, but um, with this modular way, it uh, really seems that uh, it's doing the way what uh, hook updates are yeah. doing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so is there any, 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 any benefit to doing the modular way instead of doing hook updates? Because for one example, I see uh, on the screen, you said, okay, you change from the thumbnail to the large. Um, so if you change the config, probably in the content, it will stay as it is. Uh, um, it won't, but uh, yeah, it's a good question. So uh, the, the only benefit that you're saying, I mean, uh, so the question was, uh, why don't we directly use uh, you know code to update the things, right? Instead of uh, using the config update module, or uh, yeah. So the reason we do this, we uh, we did this because there were a lot of configurations, and we were doing the changes every day to the configuration. So it was easier to change the configurations and without you know instead of writing code and testing it. It was easier to export all the changes, make sure that the changes are uh, what we want to do, and uh, yeah, it, it was it, it becomes easier, so we don't have to worry about what uh, you know what if if your logic is correct or not. All you have to do, uh, do is uh, change the configurations on the website and export them. So that that is the only reason we we are doing this with update helper module. Anyone else? So in the beginning, you mentioned specifically the develop module. Do you know about the config exclude? Um, yes, setting in the, the setting, then setting, then yeah. Yeah. So right. So we that there is a also another way of uh, ex excluding the develop module or stage file proxy module uh, from the being exp you know the configurations of those these modules from being exported, and uh, it is you know it's a, it's a simple configuration in setting.php. I, yeah, if, uh, I did not mention that. Yeah. I wanted to, but I have yeah, not. Don't worry. It was, it was a contrib module back in Drupal 8, and it's now in core in Drupal 9, so you don't need to do anything. Just, right. just add something. Right. I don't, can't, can't remember the exact line, but something like settings, config exclude, and then an array yes. of module names. So it is uh, by default. I think it is there in the mentioned in the comments in the setting.php. You can just uncomment those lines. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi. Thanks first for the nice talk. And in the beginning, you mentioned uh, having multiple sites sharing a common module base, but also having several different modules installed each. Yes. Is there a way? For example, to split or somehow partially override the core extension YAML. So yes, you uh, had the common core extension YAML for the base module to meet on every side, and you have a partial core extension YAML for like side A and a different for side B and so on. Yes, so we. Uh, so this was a couple of years ago, but I think there there is. There was a way because we were handling that way. So correction YAML was uh, different for all the sites, but I'll I'll probably tweet the answer. Uh, I don't remember we how we handled that. Okay. So. Well, that's <laughs> thanks. Anyone else? <laughs> the rest. 
You ready? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think I missed something because I'm not sure I understand how it gives more power to the editors. I, I don't understand how the editors end up creating new content. Right. Okay, can you explain so, that again? Uh, I'll try to explain uh, again. So, or uh, try to explain better. Uh, so when we use the traditional way, uh, whatever configurations we export as a developer, uh, are you a developer or? Yeah, yeah. Right, I just don't understand backend? with the modular way, how it right. makes it easier for editors. Yeah. Okay, so uh, when the developers export the configurations, they will be directly imported into uh, the li live site when they are deployed, right? And uh, that will make sure that all the configurations directly made on production, they are gone. So it gives more power to content editors or you know who, whoever has access to di directly on production, who actually are using production for editing uh, or you know changing the website. Because uh, in modular way, the changes done by them are not overwritten. And they, they stay. I mean, they don't have to rely on developers to actually, you know, again export the changes from production and put it in the code base. So whatever they they do, they, it is final. Okay. So if you want to make sure one configuration is never uh, changed by editors, you have to specify that you override it in your config. Or so how does it work? So uh, if you want to do that in traditional way, you have to exclude that con. config ignore you there is a form a settings form you where you can put that uh, configurations configuration files name and that will not be imported or you can do it partially as well so we, you can just uh, put the configuration that you want to ignore and that will be not that won't be overwritten when you know the no new so it will only be installed at, at initially and then it will be left away uh, left alone you, that they won't be uh, changed when the next next deployment happens. Does that answer your question? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe another question. Continuing uh, her question first. Um, so, if you want to first kind of give them power to manipulate the configuration, the content Could editors, hold, hold sorry, yeah, the con uh, to the content editors, if you want to give them more power uh, by not overriding their configuration. And then later you kind of want to, um, what, include what are they doing? Or because I'm, I'm not getting that part as well. So, sorry, I didn't, so I was, uh, let me repeat the question, whatever, whatever I have understood. So you're saying that uh, can we, um, so if we have the modular way, can we go back to the traditional way for, for that side? Is that? Okay, okay, maybe I can rephrase it. Ah. Um, so your initial issue was that uh, most of the configuration was pro produced on the production by the content editors, right? Mm -hmm. um, so no, that was the part of the issue. Uh -huh. The second part, I mean, the main main reason was we are, we were using the same configurations or the same things on hundreds of websites so it was not easy to you know put different so that was just initial part the node editing part we could just you know, that is uh, basically we can resolve that using config ignore or you know conflict split with uh, different types so but it, that will work only if we are using uh, one single website or a copy of same same website like dev staging and production no, but in this scenario, we are not. We have actually unique, uh, hundreds of different unique websites. So if I'm getting this right, you have like one source of truth uh, where there is um, content editors on production providing configuration, mm -hmm. and then this configuration then distributed to other projects. Uh, but that also means that other projects are also the source of the truth for the configurations. And right. So we could just, you're saying we, uh, we could just use single UID for all the uh, websites? Yeah, we could do that. But uh, I don't know what, what the problems, I mean, 
Yeah, we could, but it'll we'll have to create hundred of hundred hundreds of different uh, conflict splits, which again will be difficult to maintain. Uh, and uh, you know we'll have to make sure that every customer, uh, you know, does exp you know works on their configurations or uh, is expert on their configurations configuration management. So you know when when they're exported, they don't don't accidentally delete their own configurations in the next deployment. So in this, I mean, in our case, we we had given the control for the the website. I mean, we had given it away to the the brand itself. So they were making uh, every change to the website. So, but yeah, I mean, that, uh, yeah, your question makes sense. Okay, I think uh, we have just a sec, a minute. Any last question? All right. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, <laughs> if you have s some further questions, please. Uh, my uh, Twitter handle is sushyl underscore. So you can reach me there. <laughs>